Sleep happily ever after. From the Alaska Airline Studio. This is Brock and Salk. Streaming everywhere at 710sports.com. All right, Graz, that's enough talking, all right? We got work to do here. We got 10 minutes. We got Jerry Bruckheimer and Tim Laiwicki in the building with us. How about this site right now? I'm looking at NHLseattle.com. Two hours, 30 minutes, and 30 seconds. You've been on some countdowns, Mr. Bruckheimer, through the years, right? Three, two, one, shoot. Here we go. Two hours, 30 minutes, 25 seconds. What are you feeling this morning getting ready, Jerry, for uh, the opportunity to bring the NHL to Seattle? Well, you know, we did the same thing for Armageddon. We had this big clock that was, <laughs> that was ticking down till The movie or till the, real till, life? Till the movie came <laughs> <Okay>. out. <laughs> so, and that was a, a big explosion. It did really well. So we're hoping the same thing's going to happen here in Seattle for hockey. I mean, People you, go on the website and, and put deposits down for tickets. You have done so much. You know, Graz and I were talking about it yesterday before the show. You have been a part of so many amazing projects do you still have a little anxiety, a little nervousness, a little just bounce as you get ready for this morning here? And NHLSeattle.com is where you order these tickets and where we're going to blow this thing up today in ways that the NHL is going to be so overwhelmed. Does it still get you a little juiced? Absolutely. But, you know, I love this city. I love the fans here. You look what they do with the Seahawks and the Mariners and the Sounders, and we know they will be a great addition to the NHL. They will be the toughest. This will be the toughest building that any team will have to come into because these fans are so exciting and they'll be excited about hockey. You support two junior teams here, and we can't wait for 10 o'clock to see the explosion of people signing up for tickets. First off, thanks for the decades of entertainment. Thank you. And I mean that from a lot of people. Um, secondly, do you have a connection with hockey? Yes. Uh, my dad took me to games when I was seven, eight years old, and I started playing for about a year. And then when Wayne Gretzky came to L.A., I started taking skating lessons. And I still need a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> did you use the word explosion right there? Did you, just, did, did you slide that one in? Absolutely. Absolutely. This is the f- best, fastest game in the world. And you got the best fans, and they deserve to see all the NH star, uh, NHL stars coming here. How do you think this market will take on hockey? From your, you know, Tim was telling us yesterday, sitting in the stands and L.A. Kings games with you and your passion and your zeal for this sport, how do you feel this market's going to respond? Well, you just look at what they do to other sports and you see how excited the fans get. And once they get hockey in their own building, we're going to have a world-class arena that we're, we're building and they're going to love it. I was in L.A. when Gretzky came. And I remember that, you know, the Kings had been there for a while. Jack Kent Cook had, had said the great line about, they told him to move to Los Angeles because 800,000 Canadians live there and they all hate hockey. It didn't seem like it was ever going to work. And then Wayne Gretzky created an electric sort of experience when, when he got there. And that, that feels to me like the energy that this has created. It certainly has. Two of the best players in the NHL have come through here. Two rookies, a kid playing for the Islanders. I think he scored a goal last night. Uh, Brock Besser's another guy I think was around here, too. He scored two goals Patrick last Patrick Marlowe, too. Patrick Marlowe. So you, you're going to have a lot of great players in that arena that have grown up in this area. You know, Tim, and I asked you off the air before you came in. You guys made the rounds yesterday. Wow, you were busy, and David Bonderman as well, and it was a joy to have you guys in here for an extended conversation yesterday. As you slept on it, and as you wake up this morning, and we're now two hours and 21 minutes and 18 seconds away at NHLSeattle.com, was there anything you felt like, man, I really want to get back in the box and take one more swing at it because i got to get to this? Uh, actually, the one story I'll tell you is we went to the Angry Beaver last night. Uh, watching St. Louis, Detroit with all the hockey fans there and passed out all the NHL 2020 merch. And we're driving back at about 745. We pass Mercer and Mercer to Key Arena, wide open, no traffic. no. Not, now, there was no event, fairness, but right. we were amazed at, at how easy it was to get in and out of there. Um, we, we hear a lot about traffic. That's the one thing I would say at the end of the day, we're, we're spending $60 million that we're going to provide to the city to computerize the traffic lights begin to think through how we improve that experience through technology. We're building additional parking spaces. And remember, it's a 10-year problem. So within 10 years, we're going to have light rail at Seattle Center. If we could figure out a way to get 12 million people in and out of Seattle Center each and every year, we're going to figure out a way to get 2 million people to and from the new arena. You had another magic word there, I think, parking. And that's something that that's, I guess it sounds strange to say, but it's ever-evolving, isn't it? 
It is simply because, look, we're, Jerry was just absolutely blown away yesterday by the cranes. And even David Bonderman, who is in all parts of all the world all the time, he lives on that airplane. Even David was commenting, I've never seen an, an, an explosion, sorry, there's that word again, <laughs> like this one here and the, and the development going on. So parking spaces are going to come and go. And so our challenge is to take the 7,000 parking spaces we've identified and begin to, through technology, allow people to pre-reserve and locate them and allow their technology to take them directly to the parking space and back home. So we have a lot of work to do on parking, but believe me, it's our number one concern. And more nights like last night at 745 where there was no Mercer mess would be a good day. Tim Lywicki, Jerry Bruckheimer in the building with us, NHLSeattle.com. Two hours and 25 minutes now, our chance in this market, Graz, to respond. And as I think Mike Salk said very well yesterday, there's no politicians, there's no lobbyists, there's no bureaucracy, there's no city councils, there's none of that. This is just the sports fans' opportunity to show the country, to show Mr. Bettman in his office in New York, uh, what winter sports and what the NHL in particular means. You know, I, I did a lot of homework leading into this interview, uh, Jerry. And did I do I, I understand that you have a ice skating rink in Kentucky? And my wife's from Kentucky, so we have a farm there, and I built a three-on-three rink inside what looks like a barn. And I have a blast to go back there and play with some kids who play junior hockey there. Three-on-three three ice skating rink in a barn in Kentucky. That's right. Bring some friends out. We all play. That's love right time. there. <laughs> that is love right there. I, I keep on telling everyone, Jerry already owns a team. Unfortunately, <laughs> there's three people on it. And you get on the ice and play, huh? That's right. And there's no spectators. So in your game. Good. And what's your game like? Terrible. <laughs> Did you, ever, ever, did you ever see a turtle on ice? <laughs> That's me. There's something about it, though, isn't there? There's That's something great. about hockey that, that uh, I mean, I, I make the make the point all the time that, you know, you can watch a baseball game and, and get a sense of what it's like. You can watch a football game on television and get a sense of what it's like. You watch a hockey game on television, that's one thing. Being at the game is a completely different experience. It's the best live sport there is. It's so fast, so exciting. It's a fan sport. You're right, you're right on top of the players the way we build in the arena. They're going to be right in that in that experience as the players are. Now, in the, in the, in the long and varied history of movies, have you ever done any, anything hockey-related? Not yet, but we'd like to. We're working on it. <laughs> this will be it right here. The this fan could, experience in, in Seattle. Well, this, this could make a good movie. Just the whole, the whole jump, all the hoops you got to jump through, all the stuff you've got to do. This is a drama, isn't it? No kidding. And we're finally almost at the finish line. What is it like to jump into this game? Right? What, what is it like to jump in and partner with Tim and the Oakview Group and to have a David Bonderman and to work through? And, and you're right. I mean, we, we know this. As much as any market, I think, in sports market, the last 10 years – of seemingly all these hoops and then the wall and then the hoop and then the wall and then the hoop and here we are. I think this market, man, it's talked more of the uh, stuff off the court and off the ice than anything else. What's it been like for you to jump in and, and be a partner in this process? What have you learned? Well, it's so great because the fans have been disappointed for over 10 years. And we're going to bring a professional team in here, a hockey team in here, and we're going to show the other commissioners that this city is worthy for other teams besides hockey, and that's what we're really excited about. We hope the NBA is watching today and how many season tickets we sell uh, starting at 10 o'clock. And you got to be patient because I, I think we'll be jammed at 10, but we'll have plenty of room for you, so hang in there. What's your involvement going to be, do you think? I'm going to stand back and enjoy it just like the fans. <laughs> <laughs> Not going to do anything special for opening day? No, that's going to be Seattle. It's Seattle's team, they'll decide what they want. We're going to have a lot of local people working on this on this sport for us. Why is this important to you personally? Why, why do you want to be a part of this at this stage of the game? Because I love the sport. I love to spread the sport. It's a great sport. Kids grow up with their parents because if, if you're a good player, you're on a travel team, which means you're with your folks all the time. The hockey kids are the best there are. The hockey players are the best bunch of guys in sports. You know, they're terrific, and that's why Seattle has to have a team here. Best, most um, – can I throw a couple entertainment questions your way? Is sure. that all right? Sure. The most intense scene you've ever shot? Oh, I think Black Hawk Down. There were some pretty intense scenes in, in that movie. And movie just we just had come out called 12 Strong, as mm. where these young, young soldiers that. are on uh, horseback. And I like that never one. ridden before. So that, those were – those were two movies that were really intense. Ever a deal, a movie you turn down that you look back and go, mm, man, I wish I could have been a part of that? 
Uh, not really. No, there are a lot of movies I'd like to make that I haven't made, but we're working on those. <laughs> and is this Tom Gunn thing going to come? Is this going to come to fruition at some point? We hope so. I mean, Tom's excited about it. Paramount wants to do it. We have a terrific director and terrific screenwriter working on it. So we hope we can put it all together but, in the next but, couple months. Piper could be listening. I hope so. He lives up in uh, the San Juan Islands, I yeah, believe. That's right. You ever worked with uh, athletes and, and any stick out in, in, in your years of producing movies? Well, we used Marty McSorley in Bad Boys, who was a, a fighter in the NHL. Yes, he was. And he was a great guy, and he did a pretty good job, i got to tell you. Hey, last thing for me, Tim, and uh, Jerry, you talked about the hockey kids and just their makeup and nature. Steve Levy was great yesterday talking about the hockey culture. I understand you got a pretty cool experience with a hockey kid at the Space Needle coming up later. I think one of the things we all wanted to do is make this about Seattle. So you're going to hear in the coming months uh, a management team that's going to be made up of Seattle people um, and Seattle leaders and people that uh, are well-known here. That's important to us. Uh, David Bonderman yesterday made it very clear we're going to bring in local partners to join Jerry, myself, and David uh, in the ownership. That's very important. But the kickoff, we wanted to make uniquely Seattle. We couldn't find a better person to be uniquely Seattle than a young man that has been playing hockey his whole life, club hockey. Uh, he lost his foot to cancer in a massive battle to um, to beat that disease. Uh, he now plays on a, a artificial uh, foot. Literally, they found a way to create a skate for him. So Brett is ultimately going to be the one that uh, rises to takes the flag today on the top of the Space Needle and brings it to the top because we want him to be about the culture that we create, um, the way that people see this organization, and the way that we ultimately involve the city of Seattle. He, he's our perfect ambassador. Awesome. So we're making him the captain very today. Nice. Very, very, nice. very cool. Well, an explosion in two hours and 19 minutes and 30 seconds. NHLseattle.com is where we all get to be a part of this thing. And we get to uh, hopefully pay off some incredible amount of time and energy and work that you all have put in on your end to do this thing the right way. You can see the finish line. Yeah. We can. And, and by the way, the good news for you is you don't have to see our ugly mugs anymore after this. So you guys, <laughs> sure? you must be ecstatic. No, you guys are welcome back anytime. I guess. Right. Anytime. I don't want to see you again. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> hey, Jerry, thanks for taking the time. Thanks for having and us. And Tim as well. I know you guys got a busy schedule. Uh, great that they could join us for a few minutes. We get to a little Blue 42 next, Graz, and hey. a whole bunch there to dig into as well. It's Brock and Salk at 710 ESPN Seattle. Developing, Developing now. Joining us in studio.